Hey everyone, it's uh, Keith here with you, and I'm just going to do a little explanation of why I'm moving away from using uh, Roland drum triggers and their TM2 module on an acoustic kit. Now, I've been using this setup for about six, seven months, and in that six, seven months, I've had many issues. I've had to ask many questions online to a friend, um, and all the answers and fixes to what's happening, which is basically, if I hit a tom sometimes during a song, the kick will trigger. So by that I mean any little vibrations get sent to the trigger, which is where my drumstick is pointing. If I tap it even lightly, you'll hear it. Well, you can't hear it because I have it turned off, but okay, we've turned it up. Now a light hit. Very light. So. Even a, sometimes a rim shot will set it off, and you can see that if I hit the kick, you can see it's lighting up. So what the problem is, is if I lay into the snare real good, and I'll try and back off so you can see it on the camera, you should see a light in this area. So what's happening is it is triggering my kick drum right now, and I've got the threshold and the settings in the module set quite high. Now, before I had them set that high, and before I talked to a friend online, Scott, and he told me to tighten the bass drum skin up as tight as possible, muffle it as much as possible, and then he gave me a ballpark idea where my trigger setup and settings should be in the TM2. So even with all of his help, I still found the occasional time I would get a misfire or a trigger from hitting the snare or hit the tom and boom, you get this unwanted hit and, and it's really annoying. And if you're trying to uh, record music or you're trying to play live and, and, you know, in a situation like that, you want to sound professional and sound like you know what you're doing. And these misfires and what Roland calls it is crosstalk really just, it doesn't sound like a crosstalk or a mishit to someone in the audience. What it sounds like is a drummer that's making mistakes, basically. So I looked online and I was gonna buy, Trick makes a, a set of, uh, what are they called? They're the SB1s and they attach to these pedals, which are really amazing pedals. But uh, it's about $800 to buy Trick's uh, that's U.S., 800 U.S. dollars to buy their laser triggering system. And with that, you would eliminate all crosstalk because um, the sounds are produced by the laser. So every time the beater would hit the drum, it cuts the signal off from the laser, which results in your module then turning that into uh, the sample you have preloaded into the sound. So pretty similar idea as to what Roland's trigger is doing, which is a piezo. Um, that sends the signal to the module. The module inside has the recorded sound. When you hit, it plays it. So it does work, but it's far from perfect. And if you look at the tension on this skin, it's way too tight. It feels like you're playing drums or your pedals are hitting a wall. It, you can't lay into the skin and it's not very enjoyable. So without it, too, without triggering, you get this for your sound. It doesn't have the depth or uh, oomph that an, a beautiful kit like a Pearl Masters kit should have. It sounds like a cardboard box. You turn up the trigger and it sounds wonderful. But when you're playing good and you're having a fun time with your band and you're playing hard, you will get, like I showed you before, if I hit the snare, you can see it trigger. It triggers the kick. For some reason, you can't really hear it right now, but it is putting in a kick, and it's really noticeable if you're recording a multi-track. It is there. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, we're back and we've changed out the old bass drum skin. We've taken out all the muffling, as you can tell. Put a little bit of foam in the very bottom just to deaden the skin a bit. And uh, I'll mute the trigger so it's not uh, producing any sound. So now, this is the natural kick sound I'm getting. It's a lot more uh, punch to it and it sounds really good. And I'm much happier with it. It's not... Uh, super tight there's actually some give to it and it doesn't feel like you're playing on a brick wall anymore so there's many advantages to this with using the lasers you're not going to get any crosstalk I'm not going to hit a tom and trigger my kick drums like with the rolling stuff another good thing you could do is if you had a trig mic laser pick and you had a an old rolling kit or something you could add this to the kit with a mesh head and you'd be able to have a full-size kick drum while laser triggering, which would be amazing. And it would be, I would say, 90% quieter than any of the Roland kick drums, even the KD-120. It would be really, really quiet. So that would also be a, a bonus. So if I turn it on, well, it's already on. So if I unmute it, you'll get a sample. So when I hit, it transfers the sound into my mixer. So, perfect, accurate triggering all the time. I'm not getting any extra hits. It's quite awesome. Um, there's a few buttons on it, your battery and up button. That's so you can check uh, the power of your AA. Um, what I would recommend is if you're gonna use these for shows, Put a new one in before you uh, leave your house and you get to the show you won't have to worry about it dying on you and uh, according to the company it'll get eight hours of life on one AA so it's pretty decent. The mode button will uh, change the parameters of the triggering kind of similar to what Roland has uh, from linear to like a loud one loud two but they just have a different name for it pretty well and to change those modes you just hold that down and you go with the up button. Uh, the response also changes um, how hard your hits are. So you can trigger from a pretty soft hit with this. It doesn't take a lot to make it actually start to work. So uh, you can set it up for a real light hit and it will uh, have velocity sensing. So if you're playing soft, it'll do a softer hit. As you play harder, it'll give a harder hit. For myself, I want it to pretty well be consistent hard kicks for metal, so that's what I have it set at. It takes a little bit of power to get them to work, but they trigger amazing. Um, what else could I point out? All right, it's just an XLR cable from that directly into the soundboard. So if you were playing a live gig, it would be no different than the sound man putting a, a microphone in, inside your kick drum, so it's pretty basic.